In my lab, I very rarely do semen cultures because they are very unreliable. I know they are often used to diagnose chronic bacterial prostatitis, but before you make changing antibiotics part of your daily meals for the next two years or so, you should consider watching this video. My name is Stefan Bundrock. I'm a board certified urologist and sexologist. On this channel, I have uploaded many videos about chronic prostatitis, both bacterial and non-bacterial chronic prostatitis. Chronic prostatitis is challenging when it comes to diagnosis and treatment. In my expert opinion, there are a lot of men walking around with a wrong diagnosis. Watch my videos to find out why. But let's focus on diagnostics for chronic bacterial prostatitis. Semen cultures are quite popular here, but they are also tricky. The goal of semen cultures is to collect specimens from both the prostate and seminal vesicles. But the problem is that the sample has to pass the urethra and may even get into contact with the glands of the penis or with the fingers. What you have to know is that the urethral opening and the first centimeter of the urethra are usually colonized by bacteria. Urethral closure makes it impossible for them to ascend further up, so you are usually spared from infections. In sample collection, they suddenly come into play because they may contaminate the sample. When this happens, now a few of them are in the sample container. From here, they are spread onto the culture medium, which is then incubated for 24 hours, and during that time, they multiply, which will lead to a false positive result, or to a wrong interpretation, leading to a false positive result. So, what result is considered positive? When there are at least or more than 100,000 colony forming units per milliliter, I often see patients who have been treated for much less than that. However, encountering only 1,000 to 10,000 colonies would lead me to question the result's significance. Changing pathogens always raise my suspicion. I am also careful about the pathogens found because enterococci and E. coli are the typical bacteria to be found within the distal urethra. It is not for certain that they also reside inside the prostate when showing up in cultures. I start to doubt the accuracy of a diagnosis if there are symptoms and a presumably positive culture and antibiotics don't work or only work for a short while, especially when the same bacteria show up over and over again in small concentrations in repeated semen cultures. Chronic bacterial prostatitis needs a more detailed diagnostic evaluation. The current guidelines of the European Association of Urology are critical towards isolated semen cultures for the diagnosis of chronic bacterial prostatitis. Sample collection is critical, aiming at eliminating any contamination. It all starts with voiding. Have a full bladder and empty it completely to wash out as many bacteria from the urethra as possible. Wash your penis, the glands of the penis and your hands with a special soap that reduces bacteria. Such soaps commonly contain chlorhexidine. Then produce the sample. Use a sterile container for sample collection. Don't touch the inside of the container with your hands or other parts of your skin. But what are the typical symptoms of chronic bacterial prostatitis? It's usually pelvic pain and urinary symptoms. In my experience, the problem may not be the prostate at all, but the pelvic floor. Pelvic floor overactivity is a common condition in men. It is regularly under-recognized and under-treated. What is needed is a thorough medical history, an evaluation of the prostate and pelvic floor, and I like to do the two-glass test with voided urine after prostate massage. It will result in two samples which I incubate separately. The two-glass test is the short form of the four-glass test. The interpretation of the test results has to be done with regard to the symptoms. And in addition to that, one has to keep an eye on differential diagnoses. Especially in young men, I would want to order tests for sexually transmitted infections. I also think that it may be helpful to think about interstitial cystitis in selected cases. This is an uncommon condition leading to urgency and pelvic pain. I will do a separate video about it one day. 
So if you suffer from chronic bacterial prostatitis, there could be a solution after all. But the central question is this. Is it really chronic bacterial prostatitis? Thanks for watching. Bye bye.